Uh, so um, uh, my initial training is in mathematics. I did a Bachelor of Science in mathematics many years ago. I did a master's in uh, biostatistics uh, from the University of Hasselt, and I did a PhD in statistical modeling from the University of Edinburgh, uh, Scotland. I uh, worked in Makerere in the Department of Mathematics. I worked there, I think, for 12 years. I worked at the MRC, Medical Research Council, Uganda Virus Research Institute, for 11 years. And uh, currently, I work with a USID project uh, where we are trying to see how data can inform uh, policy. Uh, but I continue to supervise uh, graduate students, that's masters and PhD within Makerere University. And also I'm um, visiting a professor at the University of Hasselt, that is in Belgium. So um, uh, I thank you Abel for including me as the faculty on this. And then you gave me a quite a challenging topic <laughs> that, uh, is really a virgin area, I believe. And so we are going to discuss together. We are going to learn together with the team. And good enough, you people have already gone ahead and you're even thinking of uh, submitting uh, a manuscript. So that is great point to start. So this is the topic that I was given that why uh, why is gender consideration important in math? Or oh, is gender consideration important in mathematical modeling? And how can we incorporate, uh, incorporate it in gender and statistical analysis? From the introductions I've had, I think there is a one statistician, if I'm not wrong. Uh, the informatician, I guess you also have a good dose of mathematics. I believe. Uh, yes, I do have a background in computer okay. science. Okay. And uh, so others are, yeah, I, I, men, a number of you are working in, uh, uh, you are all working in maybe medical related, where you're interfacing with medical data anyway. I believe that's why you're here as uh, fellows on a, model, a mathematical modeling uh, grant. So let's see how we brainstorm about these uh, topics and uh, we can discuss with what you are working on and see maybe how we can improve it and how we can enhance. Each other. So what to say yes to this question, is gender consideration important in mathematical modeling? Is the answer yes or no? <laughs> I guess the fact that we are here, we believe, we all believe that it is uh, important. And uh, we can give uh, various uh, reasons why we think it is important. Um, of course, we are going to hinge mainly uh, on infectious disease data, and so, or infectious disease or health data, health related aspects, as we go through this, as even you go through your your whole uh, uh, program. I think. Most, if not 99 percent in is health related, and the data will most likely be 100 percent health related. So you will see that uh, the thinking is tuned in that direction. So when you look at various diseases, uh, their epidemiology may, it may be impacted. They, they may behave differently between males and females. And of course, uh, what we, here we are talking gender. <laughs> in the current day we are living in anyway, gender, uh, people think this is not the biological sex, male and female, but there are other aspects to consider. And so uh, we are saying, yes, it is important. Why? Because uh, some diseases 
or because all diseases, they, their epidemiology may behave diff is different or is impacted by whether one is male or female or by their uh, practices. And uh, there are some, some, some diseases, there is for some diseases, there is disproportionate effects. For example, you may find a disease that is mainly impacting males or is mainly impacting females. And so to, to ignore, to ignore the sex stroke gender differences may be a disservice or may make our models not applicable. Uh, many scientists uh, disregard models because sometimes they feel like this is too far-fetched or it is so disconnected from reality and so on. So when we, we take, we make a deliberate effort to integrate uh, biological differences, sex differences in our modeling, we, 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 we make them attractive. We make them uh, impactful. We have seen, uh, uh, as you, since you're already working on a, on a paper, I believe you have dug into literature and seen how modeling has impacted. And maybe uh, Abel has already told you last week the importance of models, of mathematical models, uh, in fighting infection or in coming up with uh, interventions. So we know that mo mo mathematical modeling is important, but how can we attract the users, the would-be users of our results from the models to, 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 to appreciate their, the, 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 in, the importance of our mathematical models? So when we make, we try them appealing, that we are able to translate uh, research results into public health uh, impact. So when we inter when we we, pop we we categorically decided to look at the disease, particular disease, what is its epidemiology? Does it behave differently by by biological measure disease affect? the different uh, sexes differently, disproportionately. If so, then it is proportionate within our models. And of course, there's also heterogeneity. Uh, do we all understand heterogeneity? My name's sick. What do you understand by heterogeneity? Um, I think it is, uh, it is the opposite of <laughs> homogeneous, like um, the, the susceptibility, infectiousness, and uh, virulence is not uniform among, I, I, I think, among uh, the different genders. Yeah, so thank you. So you may find that uh, the ability to acquire infection or to pass on infection, or how vigorous the infection is once it is in a certain uh, organism may vary, may vary. So there are some infections where it is known uh, from the mechanism of that infect of that disease that there is it is there is the heterogeneity. So we cannot just ignore that, and so we need to integrate. To, to ensure that actually we are trying for, for us, for us, the quest is always to make how, how, how realistic is our mathematical model? How important is it? How easily can it be adopted? How can results from, from this model easily be acceptable? So how can we tune them to near reality as much as possible? Of course, since it is modeling, we know that it's not a reality, we are just simulating scenarios. But if we can simulate scenarios in a way that mimics the reality as much as possible, it makes them easily acceptable and easily relevant and usable to the audience that they are targeted to. So because of heterogeneity, 
in susceptibility, in, in ability to pass on infection, in uh, how vigorous the infection, we need to, 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 to factor this. So that makes a uh, gender consideration important to bullet. So biological, uh, I, I guess this is thinking about it's still the same to go with uh, male, female, or if we are the other models, it may happen that it, you may have influence on ability of a certain disease based on one's uh, gender orientation. Okay. Yeah, so again, we are saying uh, you may find that uh, in depending on the nature of the disease, uh, the sexual differences may be important. Uh, in, in, in science, the virologists and immunologists and people like that, they know they talk about immune response quite a lot. And this impacts on uh, even when they are making up, uh, coming up with vaccine research and things like that, uh, measuring their antibodies after exposure to certain disease. This, there, there has been research that has shown, you can find examples that actually the response varies, may vary by sex. And also how much, again, going back of the disease body. Would you find in one gender based uh, on differences may indeed exist in a certain uh, based because due to exposure to certain diseases? And so again, to, to integrate these. Uh, differences within our modeling, depending on the kind of uh, infection disease that you are modeling. Of course, if uh, infection is a uh, hundred percent, those that are affecting females, then of course, this may not be a question. You already have one gender that is impacted. And so maybe what would come in is how is their gender socialization? How are they behaving? What is their sexual orientation? They may be biologically female, but uh, the way they are conducting themselves is exposing them to other things that are going to impact on the how the disease uh, exp expands within, uh, moves on within their bodies. So again, one may argue that yes, indeed, you still need uh, uh, to address gender, even in, in uh, if diseases that are predominantly for one gender. Yeah, so... Gender differences, sexual orientation, and stuff like that also impact on healthy seeking behavior. We have seen, of course, uh, like in Uganda, the recent uh, law that was passed. Uh, and uh, some people who are serving a certain category of people, they saw that uh, actually they, they lost they lost their clients or patients uh, because of uh, the risk that it was uh, they were facing. If they maybe they could be arrested, but also, for example, in Uganda, the access to health service care may be impacted by these uh, gender socialization uh, issues. So that will impact on the transmission dynamics, on the interventions that uh, you are trying because you, you may want to be modeling an intervention, but then you have to be to take into care into what is the mode of delivery of my intervention. Will a health seeking behavior impact this uh, delivery, the success of my intervention? Health seeking behavior and access to health care will definitely influence 
for certain infections and diseases and planned intervention. Sorry, I think I had lost the network. Where did you end hearing me? Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, doctor, now. Where did we end? Uh, we stopped on that slide and you're beginning to, where you were explaining the gender differences and how people were, uh, were how people were actually losing their like services, those who were serving the special group and then you went to the interventions that, um, the planned interventions, that's why you were Okay, sorry about Intervention that, uh, where I am, uh, okay. Yeah, so I was saying that uh, we, we know that, particularly in Uganda, the effect of the law that was passed, people may hide away. And so uh, you, you may find that there's interruption in access to treatment, access to, and also it may impact on the model of deliver of the proposed intervention. So even with uh, infections that may be predominantly of one sex, you may still have to consider gender differences, the gender socialization differences, and how these will impact on the transmission dynamics, and most importantly on the effect of the any proposed intervention measures on the disease outcomes. So I had uh, paused here and said uh, from those two slides, those are some of my reasons, some of the reasons that I could think of why one would want to consider sex stroke gender uh, considerations, consider them important in mathematical modeling. So I had opened it up for discussion and additions. Um, Hello, thank you, Dr. Rebecca. Uh, maybe I would like to make an addition on, I don't know whether you called it gender socialization. Uh, for instance, uh, in Uganda, women, adolescent girls and young women are about three to four times more likely to to acquire HIV. So um, when we are this. Mm. I've said when we are designing interventions, we we really have to take that into consideration because if you take everyone to be at the same risk, then 
your intervention probably won't work. So we need to look at that specific why that uh, why that gender compared why the girls compared to the boys are more affected and what can we do to uh, bring down the incidence. Thank you. Uh, that is quite important indeed. And uh, for example, in HIV, we know that uh, the young, the younger women, or adult, young and adolescent women, are disproportionately affected compared to uh, the same age of the boys. So yeah, that is very important, and so our intervention measures that we come up with need to be age specific and we know that in modeling many times a number of times we have considered age as a factor it's one of the main ones that is considered as uh, the, the 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 source of heterogeneity the source of heterogeneity in susceptibility as well as uh, in infectiousness yeah thank you uh, what else Morning. I'm going to make an addition to uh, biology. Morning. Yeah, biological sex differences. Uh, when you look at the yes. uh, okay, from a medical standpoint, when you look at uh, the genetic um makeup of maybe males or females, firstly it's different, mm -hmm. and then also the hormonal differences that affect different kinds of diseases and how women respond to them. Then I'd also specifically emphasize that women's bodies go through different phases from being non-pregnant to being pregnant to having menopause and all those have an effect of how they respond to a specific disease. So also sometimes considering those aspects of gender allows us to make better interventions. Then in terms of transmission dynamics, I'd give an example of cervical cancer which mostly it's mm. which affects women but one of the risk factors or the spread is actually from the men males don't really go through that cancer area but they are a source of the cervical cancer mm. part of the source so even in the interventions when we're going to consider that we also have to consider mm. how the males should also act in order to reduce on the cervical cancer spread thank you Indeed, indeed, that is very, it's a very good one, yeah, because we know that, that is it the HPV? HPV, yes, is, uh, yes, and uh, currently in Uganda, I think they are just uh, they are vaccinating only young girls. Do boys um, also have a chance? No, boys don't have a chance of vaccination. They're only vaccinating girls from eight years to 26. That's the range. Yeah, that's a very nice example of uh, sex uh, consideration because one may think, oh, cervical cancer is for, it's 100% for women. And yet we know that uh, a big part is due to that virus, which virus is also quite uh, prevalent among the males. Wow, that's a nice one. Thank you so much. Yeah, another one. Um, uh, my submission is on, I was thinking about how in terms of gender, when it comes to decision-making, if we look at women's mm. health, how males are very influential mm. when women are making decisions. If you go for like um, family planning or like through antenatal visits, even in the absence of a male, most of the females do not want to make decisions. Until I asked my husband, ABCD, so as we're designing our interventions, and you go to the antenatal clinic, like for family planning, it's not a, a guarantee they will take it mm. up. So until we put into consideration what the husband thinks, it still has an implication. So it ends up being a, a both of them like into consideration when you're in that area. Mm. Mm. Yeah, mm. that's my wow. submission. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, that was who? Elizabeth. That's Elizabeth, yes. 
Yes, thank you so much. Yeah, so you can see that indeed uh, it is uh, it's, there, there are quite a number of things to change in the current modeling uh, uh, mind mindset. Uh, so from the a few examples we have seen, we indeed confirm that yes, indeed, gender consideration is important in modeling. And so it is high time we can uh, we, we started uh, addressing this. And so in this group, I think we are at a good point to 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 to, to show <coughs> to showcase. I've seen uh, quite interesting topics that Abel was uh, displaying earlier. And so we can see how 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 we can integrate integrate in because for some of them you find they are already existing models and what we, we have to do is just to see how can we integrate gender into these models to address a specific weakness a specific gap that we will have noticed regarding a specific uh, condition or disease uh, any other others who do you want to, to submit um Maybe um, let me come on the point of disease outcome. Uh, from literature, mm. it shows that um, uh, women are more likely to develop disabilities after suffering mm -hmm. from some diseases or maybe after some processes, like uh, the ones Rachel had actually explained earlier on, things like um, pregnancy, um, post-menopause, there are some outcomes that are really not good after maybe pregnancy, during delivery, and this brings maybe disability among women. And yet after developing the disability, their lifespan is longer compared to that of women. So ideally modeling this uh, gender-based diseases is really, really very important according to the literature. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Leticia. First, then Lydia. Thank you so okay. much, Alice. Mm. Okay, as she was talking about the disease outcome, I thought it could mm. all go back to the health utilization and how our males and females may differ in healthcare seeking behavior. This mm. runs back to the adherence of how they can adhere to certain uh, healthcare utilizations and certain drugs, at least we can hinder the outcome of any disease. So maybe mm -hmm. modeling the effect of these differences may be important in assessing more so how accurate uh, different surveillance data can, can be. So my, my main point is that uh, the disease outcome may go back to how that these gender differences may differ when it comes to the healthcare utilization. Yeah, and adherence. Wow. Thank you. Very nice. Thank you, Leticia. Lydia, then Benjamin. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm just going to speak to to aspects of disease transmission. Uh with regards to observations uh, during uh, outbreak prone disease transmission. The, we, in, in our societies mm -hmm. and communities, we have expectations uh, for both the males and the females. And from observations and from mm -hmm. experience in disease response uh, during outbreaks, uh, the expectation in our communities is that uh, women uh, the ones who take care of uh, the sick. They're normally the ones who are exposed most. They're the ones who are bathing mm. the, the patient. Mm. They're the ones who are in the hospital sleeping in the patient. Uh, so you find that because of that um, expectation from our communities, uh, women are, are at risk, mm. at a higher risk, uh, especially during outbreak uh, uh, outbreaks. And you, we find that uh, many times, uh, most of the transmission that is taking place, um, especially for the contact-related diseases, uh, the women kind mm. of get more at risk because of their roles 
uh, the community expects that you should be the one to go to hospital and sleep there and bathe the patient and change their clothes. Yeah, so with that, it's it puts the woman at the forefront and also uh, puts them at more risk of, of diseases and transmission uh, from from known cases, especially in facilities. It's been common mm. that women are, are at a higher risk and we get more cases uh, via that transmission because of the gender roles. Yeah, thank you, Andovati. Indeed, indeed. Very important point, Lydia. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, so even with when we are doing our models, it is important also to look into those aspects, the social aspects, the expectation, as you have said, how that will impact. And so our question is, as modelers, we should be aware of that and we should see how, how, how can we collaborate our results with the fact that uh, there are such expectations from within uh, our communities. Thank you. Uh, Benjamin. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, my my contribution is that also women have a close touch with the rest of the of the categories of people. But especially if you pick if we pick an example for, from the time when a woman gets when a woman conceives, she's she she possesses the life of the baby from within. So the way she conducts herself, her health, all matters to the baby. So that uh, all her actions. If they are not healthy or if she has not received enough health support, then it is going to directly affect the baby that is inside. So it is going to affect either she's going to give birth to a live baby or something like that. But also even after the baby is born, it is not uncommon that it is women who give the basic health uh, tips to the children, how they do their personal hygiene, how even the women look after the babies who have just been born also matters to the health mm. of the child who has been born. So helping the women to have good health also indirectly or directly affects the other categories of the of the people. Mm. Yeah. So thank you so much. From the discussions we can really affirm that indeed we need to we need to pause a step yeah, back and see okay. what are we doing. Oh, Leticia. Oh, oh, yes, Doctor. Sorry, I must have missed that. Okay. Yeah. So I was thanking Benjamin for his submission, and indeed, we are all agreeing that it is indeed important to to take this into consideration. And when we go to review the literature we, we 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 can we can we can see yeah yes no we can see the opportunities or the gaps where we need to plug and 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 have uh, an impact through a gender based uh, model yes no yes uh, thank you doctor so um, coming in like in the aspect of data, most especially the health mm. data that is collected, uh, routinely collected by the mm. different modelers and all that, uh, most of the time you find that mm. uh, from the articles that I've been reading, uh, health data is readily available and collected uh, regarding all the health and all that. Uh, but you also find that um, the gender variable is not readily used like some other health variables, which also comes back to how uh, these models are being built and how uh, gender is really left out in uh, developing these models and all of that. Uh, so I think that if um, the variable is also included among uh, the so many variables that are really targeted for, uh, these models would actually be informing us a lot, uh, most especially regarding the gender aspect and also helping us to come up with more targeted uh, solutions that really capture the gender aspect of it. Yeah.
Thank you so much, Noah. Yes. Yes, indeed. Uh, and in mathematical modeling, there's uh, even in statistics, statistical modeling, uh, people used to talk of a parsimonious model, model that is as simple as possible, as complicated as possible, <laughs> but also one that is giving you the most information. So many times there is a, there is a drive to simplify your model. But again, the model may be again too simple and so to be real, to be to mimic reality. So yes, uh, sex, sex variable is one of the most collected variables. And many times we just stop at, uh, at the summary uh, statistics, but incorporating it in a, a mathematical model uh, because we are trying to to, to 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 simplify to make our model less complicated, then we lose that impact. But now, before many years ago, the issue was uh, computer power. Now we, we, that is no longer an issue. Computers are powerful, so one would not take days trying to run a simulation or try uh, to, to run a model. Before it would take like weeks and so on. Now you can run your model within a day, however complicated, and you are able to get the results. So we have no reason to, 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 to restrict ourselves to simple models, especially when literature or science has shown that the sex differences indeed do exist and we need to address them. So thank you so much. Indeed, I guess this is one of the reasons why uh, when they look at that, uh, Abel, the thing you shared with me, something map, one of the things they saw is that uh, the, the aspect of gender was lacking in many of the analyses. And today, you may find that, uh, I don't know, I don't know whether you people are familiar with uh, a tool called Spectrum. This is uh, estimates for HIV, but also other uh, health, healthy uh, conditions. It is a UN AIDS um, uh, and WHO tool that uh, you, can, you can plug in and you can extract some estimates and so on, estimating number of uh, uh, infections, number of estimated cases, HIV cases, number of this due to HIV and so on. So I think there you can extract, I'm not so sure whether you can extract by sex, certainly by age. So it is high time we started thinking about uh, these gender differences in, uh, in how, how we, we, we structure our models and how we are, we are, we are simulating data and also uh, pay attention pay attention uh, to is the data available disaggregated in the respective genders, sex gender differences that is desired before we can think of uh, uh, modeling it. Okay, uh, who hasn't said the word? Uh, Victoria, did I hear you? Victoria, are you here? Nakalans. Okay. You people, you, do you hear me? Yes, we do. <clears throat> okay. All right. So uh, thank you so much. I think that was a, a great discussion and a very good additions to, to, to this discussion. Why indeed we should be considering uh, gender in our models. Okay. So how can we incorporate gender in modeling uh, and statistical analysis? That was the second part of the of the topic.
these are my thoughts. I don't know what you think. So we will we need to ensure that our study design or the model, the model that we are thinking of accounts for gender as much as possible where applicable. Of course, there may be scenarios where it is known uh, that there are no gender differences, but looking at gender in a broader sense beyond the sex, the biological sex, male, female, and thinking of other aspects of gender and those things that you have brought in, the roles of one gender vis-a-vis -vis another, how, how one gender, because of the, the society expectations from that gender, makes them more vulnerable to acquiring some inf infection as opposed to the other uh, sex. All those things can, we have seen that they can you can now bring them into 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 you have to think about them at the conceptualization of your model stage at the conceptualization of your study design so that is uh it has to start from the beginning study your disease your condition of your study uh explore it what is this epidemiology what are the dynamics around it and so on such that you try to incorporate in your study design and model formulation the gender aspects as much as possible also of course as you are doing that you have to ensure that because we know that you need data to inform uh to inform your your study your, your model to form to inform your study design so it is good to think of everything as much as possible but also you should be you should be you should ensure that the things that you're thinking of you are able to collect data or you are able to collect data either empirically new data or secondary data exists or those that data exists in literature so yes we want to account for everything as much as possible but also we need to bear in mind that we should be able to have data, appropriate data available on those things that we are thinking about. And so, of course, the other one in your statistical analysis, and now even in the work where I work in right, right now, program data, they are emphasizing uh, the gender aspects. Yeah, disaggregate your output. Stop lumping things together and just generalizing one lump sum. This is the effect of, this is the prevalence, this is the incidence and so on. They now demand that things are disaggregated by the various uh, agenda uh, categorizations. So at analysis stage, uh, when we are presenting our results and outcomes from our studies, we should allow for the disaggregation and presentation of these uh, results by gender. What else beyond thinking about, uh, oh, sorry, Victoria, maybe you can, you can first log out and then log in again, such that uh, your microphone is reactivated. Okay, that is noted. Yeah, what else can we think of here? And make some small submission. Yes, please. Yes, when you talked about uh, disaggregation by gender, my thought was mm. some the effect of, of these hormonal changes on different mm. disease dynamics, most especially when we're talking about the uh, menstrual cycles and pregnancy. So when we are modeling, mm. we should as well incorporate all those into our model. <clears throat> Speaking of uh, changing cycle, pregnancy, and how these can 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 affect the progression of any disease and this can hinder mm. outcome. I don't know whether that is well. Yeah. It is. It is uh it is a valid it is a valid uh, yeah but uh, yes as I said we have to ensure that you have to bear in mind am I able to collect this information? Yeah. If you are collecting new data, that is very fine. 
as we shall see in the next slide, there are challenges <laughs> that we are facing. If we are using literature or existing data, then we are going to see that we are going to see barriers into this. But yes, as much as you are able to get data on those aspects, that is well and good to inform your model. But if you're designing your model, that's that, that is the outcome. One of the things that you're estimating is that, then yeah, surely. It is a valid, it is a valid uh, uh, aspect to consider. Yes, Alice. Um, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Rebecca. Um, in addition to all that, I also feel like um, having the disease, having um, females involved or incorporated into the workplace of disease modeling would also be one aspect mm. uh, that would actually improve um, gender-based modeling uh, or gender-based issues in that you realize uh, if we are mm. not using the secondary data and we need to do use primary data, sometimes because of our gen gender sensitivities and culture differences and religious differences, uh, there could be some data that we may not be able to adequately collect if we do not mm. have female modelers involved in it because we shall not have only male, they will not allow males maybe to, uh, to touch women, something like that. So really involving um, female modelers at all stages would also improve our um, mathematical models in terms of gender. Thank you. Thank you, Alice. And indeed, of course, uh, you are the president of this program. <laughs> yes, I think uh, the one, and maybe it is the reason why uh, we are having only one he <laughs> here. Yes. Uh, Sometimes you, you need indeed to put yourself in the shoes to also, because people may working may be working mechanically, thinking about these things mechanically without actually knowing that hey, this is actually what happens. But also at the, at data collection stage, yes, you are right. People may, will be comfortable with one uh, sex compared to the other. Thank you, thank you, Alice. Yes, Lydia. I uh, thank you very much. Uh, I was just thinking through uh, with regards to issues of considering gender uh, for uh, in modeling. Like for example, right now the 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 design the design of this uh, course is that we are going to handle women's issues. And that means mm. that even when you go out to collect uh, data, you have already kind of selected uh, the gender at that level uh, of mm. data collection. Even the design of the course is really to focus on women health. So I was just thinking through and wondering at the level of model building, haven't we already um, accounted for the gender differences at, 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 earlier, at the earlier stage where we, we have had our studies designed uh, based on, on the issues that are affecting women. It's just a wild thought. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. It is a valid thought. And I, I also, when I saw this topic, I was already thinking, yes, uh, what's, what, what's the gender here? If we are going to think of uh, majorly infections that are affecting women, we have already selected the gender. But then from the discussions that we have already received here, people have brought in other gender socialization aspects. Yeah. Like um, the fact that I don't know whether it was Lydia or who brought in the idea that women are expected, for example, to look after the sick. Yeah. And we have scenarios where people have picked up infection from, from wards. Mm -hmm. So you may be 
it may it it may you may now think of an infection that somebody has caught off the ward when it is not entirely because they are female. It's not entirely because it is a female related infection. So I think we, we don't have to limit ourselves. We can still see how gender plays comes in here. So for instance, so somebody has also talked of the the, the the cancer, the cervical cancer. It is predominantly women, but we know that now we can bring in an aspect of intervention of vaccinating the male, of treating the male, you know? So I think, Lydia, I think we, 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 we are still in a good space to consider gender here. I don't know whether that is, uh, anyone wants to start to-, to Yes, to, to, yes, to Dr. Rebecca. That? Yes. Dr. Rebecca, I think uh, it, it's it's getting clearer uh, because the initial mm. thinking is really looking at gender and uh, looking at mm. those uh, differences, like the natural differences, the biological differences. But now when we bring mm. in other aspects, like you've mentioned, uh, and then actually mm. wrote on the issue of uh, social norms and expectations, yes. uh, then it, it still yes. stays relevant for us to consider gender. Okay, thank you. Uh, Rebecca, you had your hand up, you dropped it. And uh, do you want to submit before Noor submits? Okay, Noor, go ahead. Uh, thank you, doctor. Uh, maybe to also uh, submit like uh, on uh, the issue that has been submitted by Aridia earlier, by virtue of things, uh, mm. women, young women and young girls are actually among the vulnerable groups that we have when it comes to health. So like, if you don't include the aspect of gender, when you are even trying to work on, on health issues or coming up with uh, health models, I think, uh, you would be doing a very big disservice to this vulnerable group. Yes, we can consider the gender like in men and women, but at least the other type, that is the women, are mostly vulnerable to most of the health diseases. Mm. Or some, there are some bit of variations, but at least they are under the vulnerable group, which actually makes it more evidently that gender should be incorporated in whatever we are doing. Thank you. Hmm. We're looking for data even for literature. We know my, my, my condition that I'm considering all the possible effects and uh, mechanisms and dynamics around it uh effects on the on the young and so on they may be female but maybe age Dr. Rebecca we are losing you we can't hear What are they doing? Other us we need to collect. Yes, thank you. Let's come on. And was it was it uh Benjamin? Hello, Doctor Rebecca. We missed your explanation. Your network was breaking. Could you kindly re-echo it to us? Let me change the network. Eh? All right, doctor. Hello. Yeah, let me, let me try to change the network.
Can you hear me now? Yes, we do. Hello. Okay. Yes, we do. Yeah. So I was uh, I was agreeing with uh, it was Noor that indeed wh where we need to be a good place is this is the condition that I'm going to study, and so you try to to explore all the aspects all the aspects around this condition so that you ensure that you collect data or dig out data from literature on all those aspects, including the gender ones, uh, the social the social aspects around it, the social norms around it, even if it is hinged on one gender, but there are other social norms around it that may, may bring in that uh, gender aspect on it. Yes. Yeah, Benjamin, did you have your hand up earlier? Okay, Rebecca, go ahead. Um, thank you. Uh, one of one of the things that, that has been going through my mind as we were discussing is uh, mm -hmm. yes, the gender roles are are very important to consider, and we shouldn't just uh, lump them into sex, male and female, but uh, with regards to program data and the feasibility of collecting these kinds of that i don't i don't know if it is feasible for us to i don't know to always have this data on gender roles yeah and and, and yes rebecca that is the challenge that we, we are going to find especially if we are not collecting new data and uh as we as i put on that slide Yes, you can think of all the very many things that you want to include in your model. After all, you are no longer limited by computer power. But are you able to collect this data? Yeah? Are you able to collect this data? So there will always be data that maybe we are not able to collect in our scenario. But we can still go ahead and try different ways in which different models there is this like the akasi and things like that with things that maybe people are not comfortable to talk about uh, with a person but you can use other technologies for example electronic where somebody talks to a machine and things like that yeah so yes there will still that gap will, 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 will be there but what we are saying in this program that we deliberately try as much as possible to call, to to design models that are addressing gender as aspects and that also try as much as possible to collect the data that is related to that using the various models available okay uh, you put your hand down please go ahead you know who you were um, thank you. So I just wanted to add um, in the part of data collection, uh, which you actually answered when you talked about the machines and all that, because sometimes people really don't give us the information we need from mm -hmm. experience. So if you are actually trying to to design a better way of getting data, maybe interviews, maybe focus groups. Sometimes you might not get the information that is required. So that, but you answer that we can, you know, use machines somehow find a, a more comfortable setting to uh, to get all the data we yes. can get. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That was, so yeah. depending on the issue at hand, you think of the best way that. Uh, get data also some populations they are they are over researched <laughs> and so they know what you want to hear and so they may give you wrong information and things like that so also uh thinking of going to populations that are not they do not fatigued by research are not fatigued by you are asking them the same things and all the time and so on and so sometimes before even you ask they are giving you the answer because they know what you want to hear. So yeah, so yeah, so today you can use uh, you can use mobile uh like uh 
an acast kind of thing where somebody just talks to a machine or responds to a few questions on the phone and is not interfacing with anyone, they feel more comfortable to release some of the information. So depending on the thing that you're studying, the scenario that you're studying, you have uh, to think of new ways, which will also be a plus to this. Uh, yes, we want to bring in gender in our models. These are the challenges that we have identified, and these are the ways that we are using to address those challenges, to overcome those challenges. Thank you so much. Uh, any other? Uh, Benjamin, do you want to say something? Yeah, maybe to build on what you've just mentioned. Mm. I think also we can first create the need for that data itself, for that analysis itself, so that mm. from the word go, it is not looked at as a competition between men and female, a competition between this and that, but it is looked at from the need, from the urgency of the requirements. Mm. Thank you. Mm. Yeah, indeed. Wow. Thank you so much. I, this has been a very nice discussion. I hope you feel as I feel. <laughs> this is quite nice. It's a, quite a nice uh, group to interact with. Yeah. So we need to address uh, the current gaps and the challenges in the model design uh, stock conceptualization and in data collection, which is what we have uh, been talking about really. Because you will see that uh, today, most of our models are informed from literature. Uh, so the literature that I'm using to inform my model, did it address the sex gender issues that I want to, to look at now? Or otherwise, we just have to, to, to now put assumption that we are going to assume that uh, this aspect behaves the same way between males and female between whatever gender aspects and so on. So which becomes a limitation. And these are some of the gaps that uh, projects like this will look out to see how can we overcome some of these gaps that we are experience, experiencing. Yeah. So in addition to literature, you may have empirical data or you may actually go out to collect new data appropriate data to provide the inputs that you're going to put uh, in the models for the model parameters and also to use them to, val to validate certain assumptions that you have made. I made these assumptions. Now I, 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 I have collected data and this is what the data is telling me. This is what I get from applying my model. How are they in sync? How is the model agreeing with the empirical data? So you need appropriate data. Does the data allow for the, the, the various uh, sex uh, gender disaggregations that we need? And so we have talked uh, quite a lot uh, about this. And so, yeah. So the, 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 the question now is, uh, is to you out there. I don't know uh, the manuscript that you are, you, are, you are writing, whether it is addressing uh, some of these and highlighting the gaps and also maybe telling us how you are going to plug those gaps within this uh, uh, project. Uh, uh, who is leading this? Is it Alice? Hmm? So is uh, is this is it is is the human script taking that taking that kind of direction? If not, we know that uh, in those topics that you have listed, you will need to encounter this, and you will need to tell us how you are going to, to to plug and address the challenges that your model design, your study design, your concepts, and your data collection may may the new things that you are bringing in in order to plug those gaps. So I don't know, uh, Abel, I have not read uh, the, 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 the proposal that you put up, but uh, this is what I would anticipate uh, from all this after we have integrated this, that uh, we will see improvements in our study design net frameworks. Uh, 
in the data collection, in the analytical methods, and possibly even uh, like the informatician here, you could come up with a, a macro or a tool that you want to add within other software or even other statistical software that will tackle, will help tackle the challenges in integration of sex gender that we see in research. You may find that in R, you may have a macro that is already giving you some output by age or some output by whatever, but can, it, can you treat it further to give you finer, finer uh, disaggregations that take into account uh, the sex uh, and gender uh, differences? Yeah, I think that is what I had for uh, this uh, topic, which is quite virgin. <laughs> and so, Abel, that is what I had for, and I've really enjoyed the interaction with the team. We can go ahead and try to think aloud and brainstorm, and uh, you can engage me in your conversations on how far we want to put to see this side so that we realize are the objectives of this program. Thank you. Hello. Uh, hello, Dr. Rebecca, we can hear you. You can hear me. So I had, yeah. I had, I, I had ended my discussion unless there are more questions. I think that is what I had for, uh, given the, the newness of the topic to me. <laughs> I hope we have been able to, uh, to engage quite fruitfully. Thank you. And thank you. This, this, this uh, lecture has been very, it's going, it has been, I think for all of us, it's going to help us with the paper that we are writing. It has, it's like as if it, it was also <laughs> tailored towards our paper. So thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Rebecca. Yeah. Yes. Any other comments? Uh, anything from you, Abel, if you are available? Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Rebecca. Um, as we wait for Abel, um, according to our timetable, thank you for the first for the what for the interaction that we have had this morning. It was really mm. so helpful, and yeah, we've enjoyed it. I personally have enjoyed it, and I believe all the rest have enjoyed the lecture. Uh, from the whole of this week, we are actually supposed to have you, unless changes yeah. come in. Yes, unless changes really? come in. Yes. Hmm. Oh no. Uh today 16 in Theos oh, will be no. today. Yeah. No, you're no, not no. the one. Yeah. I've seen yeah. it. You're not that the one. That is it. That is it. Yes. Mm. Mm. Okay. Thank you very mm. much. Maybe we wait mm. to hear from Abel. Let me try to reach him out. He may be busy on something, but because he, he just logged on as our host. Yeah, so thank you so much. Uh, I'll be happy to hear from you. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to engage with one or two of you on your project interaction. Thank you so much. Yeah. So Alice, you can reach out to Abel as you say, and we see. I'll just hang on here for a bit. Okay, I'm trying to reach him out. Hmm.
I've been unable to reach him out. I've tried to call and he's not picking. He must be engaged. And I've also sent a WhatsApp, but he still seems to be engaged. That's fine, Alice. I think uh, uh, we can call it off today. You can continue with the rest of the time to fine tune your paper, to tweak it. Things which where this has informed it, uh, please do do that. Yeah. You have my email, Alice, so you can reach out for any any questions. Yeah. Otherwise, thank you so much. It was nice interacting with you all. Thank you, Doctor. Bye-bye. Right. Bye. -bye. Bye. All Thank the best. you so much, Doctor. You're welcome. All the best with your program. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. You need to tell him to, to end the recording. Send it's him okay. a message. Send him a message, please. Otherwise, it will record oh. forever. <laughs> yes. Okay. Mm -hmm.